Hi. Welcome to the second half of the day. Um, I'm going to talk really quick. Um, we're doing the micro talks now. There's six micro talks. They're going to be 10 minutes each. And we're going to start with uh, Christopher, who is going to come up here and talk about 10 takeaways to achieve a successful Kickstarter of 100K plus, which sounds pretty uh, awesome and relevant. So here he comes. Um, I like to walk around, actually. I prefer to walk around, guys, so I'll be just using this. So, guys, thank you for being here. Um, I'm Christopher Jamber, as the lovely lady already introduced me. I'm the business strategist of Kaokun Interactive. We are a small Dutch indie game development company based close, just right next to Schiphol, the airport. <clears throat> and um, I'll be talking to you about some 10 short takeaway key points that we have really learned from our Kickstarter that we successfully achieved at the beginning of March this year. So, quickly, what did we do? Uh, we had a uh, Kickstarter going on for Deliver Us to Moon. We collected a total, where's the button for this thing here, for about 104,000 euros, which is actually well, groundbreaking for us because that's what we really needed. Um, we also extended it with a short PayPal campaign of 6,500. We had, on top of that, Twitch fan donations. So, through a very famous uh, Twitcher, like fans also donated some money for us for our Kickstarter. And so, this you can all add up to one another. On our Kickstarter, we already had 487 comments, and for a, yeah, an average Kickstarter, that's actually more than double of the average comments that you get, so we were really interactive with our people. We gained over uh, almost 3,000 backers, um, that's also above the average, so we figured out that we had a very good community going on, and I'll be like elaborating more on that. Um, we also uh, combined this with a short thunderclap campaign. I don't know if everybody's already proficient with that. Um, that's, that's also where people can get together. It's like sort of a Kickstarter, but there you combine your Facebook and your Twitter and everything, and you get like a social reach where everybody tweets out a sort of message for your campaign so you can like reach out to more people. So point number one. Very important is to take your time and do in-depth research. This is something that's actually pretty straightforward, but when you think of it, we actually had uh, two local indies from the Netherlands come over to our company a while ago, and they proposed to us to like, take a look at our Kickstarter because you guys had like, a successful one. And the first thing we said right off the bat, you need more time. You don't need to start today. Actually, you need to start almost like next year. If you're planning to do a Kickstarter for next year, start now. It takes between 6 to 12 months to get all your research done and get everything ready and fixed up. Take us for it. Point number two, really define your budgeting. You need to define how much money you need for which period. So have someone on board that is able you know, to do some accounting, some financials, and some basic budgeting to figure out how much money do you need? Who do you need to pay? What do you need to pay for? Do you need to invest? Do you need some more stuff, more money? For what period? Are you going to be able to get everything for the total of your Kickstarter? Because you're also going to be paying taxes and share cuts on, on your Kickstarter as well. So you need to, like, relatively put that aside. Point number three. You need to define your digital and physical rewards early on. It really depends on the type of game that you're building. Some of these games have more um, freedom in selecting their digital rewards. Some of these games are able to give you like more skins, like uh, an MMO type of game. You're able to give like more skins, more weapons, more special stuff for your Kickstarter to make it interesting. Our game actually, because it's like a single player type of game, we were less able to be as flexible on the digital side of things, so we had to take in physical rewards, which also eat away at the money because you have to invest to get them together, like these type of suits that you were able to get. You need to buy for suits, for patches, and stuff like that. So get that done very early on, so then you know how to build your logistical network and get everything ready when you need to do your reward fulfillment. Point number four is to get your pricing tiers right. Sounds very plain and simple, but you really have to take in-depth analysis on which, like, psychological pricing. 19 is cheaper than 20. It's plain and simple. It's so straightforward, but it means so much. Because people will compare your Kickstarter with others out there that have been before, but also other Kickstarters that are competing with you at that time. So you need to be attractive and have, like, a low entry of barrier to get in there. There are also like numbers that are very popular, like number 75 apparently. People feel like spending 75 bucks on Kickstarter. It's a fact. It's like big data. Go into that and look at these numbers so you're able to figure out how should I price everything. A digital reward eats away less in the total that you're going to be getting 
But if you compare it to like a physical reward, you need to invest. So how much are you earning in total? How much should that cost you? And how much are you going to get away from it for the effort that you're going to be putting into that? Point number five, you quickly have to build your community before, during, and after your Kickstarter. If you do not have a community before your Kickstarter, forget about it. I'm going to be this blunt about it. You need to have at least 1,000 to 2,000 people in your monthly newsletter. You need to have that because these people are going to be the first people that are going to be most willing to invest in your Kickstarter to get the first 30% in the first week. If you get to the first 30% in your first week, you have 81% of success. So what do you do? You need to build a community before your Kickstarter, announce it, and get it done. These people are the people that are able to get you to the first 30%, and that's when the ball gets rolling. Point number six, pitch every flipping social media influencer out there. We had a huge, huge list of YouTubers, Twitchers, everything about 8,500 people that we emailed out in mass, but how, how much percent actually needs to reply to you to have a big reach for you? So you need to pitch out to, to, to YouTubers, to Twitchers, pitch them multiple times on a monthly basis because they get like a huge list of emails in and they need to find you only once. And if they play your game and if they put it on YouTube and Twitch, that's a huge social reach for you. And think about it. You send them an email, they have a plan, and they, make an, they can only like schedule you in a month or two. So do that beforehand, like three to four months before and keep on doing that. So during your Kickstarter, they're also pitching you. So there's like a direct return for that. Point number seven, Understand the right anatomy for your Kickstarter. There's like a load of Kickstarters out there that you need to be looking at and comparing, but these games might differ from you. They differ from your situation, your team, your elements that you're going to be putting in there, your freedom that you have. So copying a different Kickstarter does not per se mean a successful Kickstarter from somebody else for maybe a million budget might work for you because you have a different skill. So you have to really understand what your capabilities are in your own company. Number eight, strive for clarity and avoid uncertainty and vagueness. This is something we really learned in our Kickstarter. We didn't want to make false uh, promises for the future, so we stayed a little bit aloof on certain aspects, and that's actually one of the main reasons why American backers, which are actually the biggest bunch of people on Kickstarter, were like, I'm actually not going to invest in this one because we just don't know them yet. We needed more reach. So to be like uh, out there on South by Southwest and PAX East and whatnot. But we could only do that after the Kickstarter. So that was a timing-wise something that was blocking us as well. So if we were more concrete on everything that we were going to give them afterwards after the Kickstarter, they told us, I would be more willing to invest in you. So avoid vagueness. Be very clear on your Kickstarter. Number nine, prepare everyone for a very tough period. I lost about four kilos in a month. Is that taxing? It's crazy. It's literally crazy. People sometimes even get depressed. You know why? Because you are on this 24-7. The first 48 and the last 48 hours are super taxing. And the slump in between, because in the beginning it's very active and in the end it's very active, but the slump in between, that's the one that kills you guys. That's the one that like, you're for 30 or 35 months. Some people are there for 60 minutes, uh, 60 days. It's insane. I lost four kilos. Some people feel like they got older. They lost like years of their lives. And the last one, a demo can help your Kickstarter, but it can also help break your Kickstarter. I've seen plenty of examples of Kickstarters out there with the demo that did not work out. If you have a demo, make sure it's tight, make sure it's understandable, make sure it plays well. There's like, it's not game breakers, you know? It needs to work well. And if you're going to have a demo in there, it needs to have an added value. Why would this demo convince somebody? Sometimes it's better to keep the demo out so you're able to convince people more. So thanks, guys, for listening to me for about 10 minutes. If you guys have still questions about our Kickstarter and everything, feel free to come over to our booth and play our game and talk with us. We're more than willing and enjoy the rest of the day.